May God's word be spoken and may God's word be heard. Amen. As today is my last day here with you at St. Paul's, I am reminded that goodbyes are hard. No matter what the circumstances, goodbyes are just difficult, but they are so important. It is too rare in life that we get the chance to stop and reflect on what a community a place or a relationship has meant in our lives and to articulate who we are now and how we've changed. As we've often talked about, church communities are fluid. People join and people leave the community for various lengths of time. And the church is changed and made better by each person. The church is a community full of saints and sinners living and dead, a dynamic family of God. And that is especially true here at St. Paul's, where the university in many ways kind of dictates the academic calendar on which we live. But knowing that some people will be here only a short time in our community does not make goodbyes any easier. At the end of things, I always find myself wishing for more time. But in many ways, I think that's a good thing. Goodbyes are a chance to sit with some of the depth of our relationship with a person or a place. They often remind us of the other places and relationships in our lives that hold meaning for us. In the two years I've been at St. Paul's, And it's hard to believe that it's only been two years. We've shared a lot of life together. We've heard a lot of difficult readings, like the ones we heard today. (laughs) We've buried friends and parents and beloved partners together. We've laughed over Christmas cookies and hot chocolate and Halloween costumes and Christmas pageant outfits. We've been transported by some outstanding music together. We've said goodbye to beloveds who have been here, some for decades as they've moved away. We've watched children grow and families change. There have been strokes and broken bones and diagnoses. There have been marriages and divorces and babies and grandbabies. We've made advent wreaths and name tags and welcomed first year students, even as we've watched fourth year students and last year grad students get ready to launch from this place into the wider world. We've disagreed and agreed and rethought things completely. We've apologized and forgiven one another. We've also not apologized and still (laughs) forgiven one another. Or maybe we're still working on that, but, you know, life is a journey. (laughs) We've slowly come out of COVID and witnessed a campus shooting here, among other tragedies. We've said goodbye to Peyton and to Mark, and we've also welcomed Heather Annis. We've sung and cried and prayed and played and broken bread here together week after week. We've even gotten mosquito bites together at camp. That was quite fun. (laughs) We have fit a lot of life in just the last two years, just the two years I've seen. Being here, spending time together, spending so much time together, week in and week out, it changes us Sunday by Sunday week by week. It is supposed to change us. That, that is the work of church. In a lecture near DC a few years ago, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, once said, the purpose of the church is to form people into the kinds of people 
who can receive God's gifts. The purpose of the church is to form people into the kinds of people who can receive God's gifts. Whatever our circumstances, God has surrounded us and is still surrounding each of us with a multitude of gifts. We just have to make ourselves ready to receive them. Maybe you need more confidence, or maybe you need more humility. Both are here in this church. Maybe you need to speak more, or maybe you need to listen more. Maybe you need to serve more, or maybe you're that type of person who not only sets up for the whole party, but also is in the back long after everyone else is gone doing the dishes. Maybe you need to learn how to let others serve more. Only you and God together know what you need. This church, this community of St. Paul's will teach you those lessons, those exact lessons that you need if you let it. The beauty of it is that it only requires one thing, showing up again and again. You certainly have taught me many lessons for which I will forever be thankful. Our Christian hope teaches us that there are no real goodbyes in a larger sense. We are always connected. Even as we say goodbye to old ways of being, we say hello to new ways of being. Death and resurrection. It's in our DNA as Christians. And change reminds us of this fact in small and large ways. After I leave, you will continue embarking on the Building Centennial Campaign. The next full year, the next years, the next few years, will be full, very full of change. Saying goodbye to old ways of being, like handicap and accessible spots in the building, chipped paint on the radiators, <laughs> cracks in the ceiling, Deke and Heather looking at the weather reports on their phones to see when thunderstorms will cause unexpected internal flooding in the office. <laughs> we laugh about it. I know, but I know that fixing cracks in the ceiling will be hard for some of you. It's just the truth. Even when things are not working or very obviously need to be improved, change even very good change often comes with grief. Let yourselves grieve. Feel the depth of that grief. Yes, over the cracks in the ceiling and anything else that you need. And then, then look into the future. Because in letting go of the old ways, we open ourselves up to new possibilities, and the possibilities with a renewed building are endless. Think of the community partnerships that you can build. Think of the people that you can invite into this community. Think of all the discussions that you will have, the dinners that you will host, the books and podcasts and movies and new relationships that you will discover here in this place. Think of the neighbors in need you will meet and help and also be helped in turn by them. Think of the time you will spend here in this renewed space, week after week, with God's beloveds. One of these new beloveds is Peter, the new university chaplain starting in December. But many, many more of these new beloveds whose names you don't even know yet will become people whom you love so dearly that you cannot imagine that St. Paul's ever existed without them. They are out there in the world right now, following the paths that will lead them here to you. They are a part of this new future too.
think of and pray over all of that possibility and then make it happen because the world needs you. The world needs your prayer. It needs you living out your Christian faith as fully as you can. Just yesterday, we heard again about the heartbreaking violence in Palestine and in Israel, but we don't have to even look that far. We can look down the street or even in the pew next to us. The world needs your love. It needs your light. It needs your shouts of joy. <laughs> it needs you to support the children in their shouts of joy. <laughs> and it needs your beacon of love to shine as brightly as you can muster with God's help. The purpose of the church is to form people into the kinds of people who can receive God's gifts. Archbishop, Archbishop Rowan said, when we receive the gifts of God and share them, they multiply beyond our wildest imaginings. Jesus tells us again and again, that is the kingdom of heaven, receiving God's gifts and sharing them and watching them multiply. Our Christian hope teaches us that there are no real goodbyes in a larger sense. We are always connected. Our liturgy, the one that we celebrate week in and week out, teaches us this. While we're at the table, just after we've said the Eucharistic prayer, and just before communion is served, there is something special that we do. I don't know if you've noticed it before, it's called the fraction. It's when the celebrant holds up the bread that we've all just prayed over and breaks it. After the bread is broken, and before we hear any music or say anything, there is a moment of silence. Fun fact for your Episcopal trivia night, <laughs> it's actually the only time in the entire book of common prayer that silence is required. We break the bread, and then there is a moment of silence. It's like all of creation hangs in awe just for a second in that moment. The body of Christ is broken. It is separated so that it can be shared more fully. It's what we do week after week. We come together as Christ's body and then we separate from one another to be that body in the larger world. We come together and we break apart so that we can rejoin in a larger sense and re remain connected in God's communion. We are always connected, each of us. We are sent forth from this table week to week, not only to be Christ in the world, but also as practice. It's a practice for the larger sending forth that we all will do. Whether you will stay at St. Paul's for a shorter season like I have, or whether you will be here for the rest of your earthly pilgrimage, eventually, one day, you will be sent forth in a more permanent way from this place too from this people, from this beloved church, to be a part of a larger communion. Goodbyes remind us of this. Goodbye and hello. Death and resurrection. It's in our DNA as Christians. And thank God it is because communion allows us to hold on to all of those realities, the love and relationships that we cherish while making room for new beloveds and new phases of life and growth. While I am being sent forth from this table to join another part of God's communion in our church today, I will be so excited 
to see and hear where this new phase of life takes all of you. Think of and pray over all of the possibilities in this new stage of St. Paul's life. And then make it happen. The world needs you.